So this is Hate Us number six, I believe. Six. I can't believe we've suffered six different times. Let me uh, let me double check that before. Uh, I feel like it's five. No, I'm no? pretty sure it's six. Let me see. We have done a lot of episodes. So we had, what was that? I'm trying to remember the first one. Oh, yeah, it is number six. Yeah. So we had uh, Still Magnolias. Silkwood, Throw Mom from the Train, White Christmas, uh, Our Souls at Night. Uh, yeah, so this is number six. And this is Mental. Oh, man. The Australian, I assume it's all made in Australia, right? Like That's what it seemed like. It has to be. Mental is the, the perfect uh, just definition of what this movie is. What it is? What it? Uh, what is this movie? I don't know what this movie is, other than like a cry for help from someone. Yeah. Well, so before we get into it, this was chosen by our friend Fallon. Her and her husband yeah. Ken. <laughs> friend seems like a very loose term now. <laughs> and they, uh, so. Uh, she told me it was bad to begin with, but I, I watched the trailer. Did you, do you watch the trailers before you watch any of these movies? No, I r- would rather just face the, the firing squad <laughs> with the blindfold with, on. Without the extra minute and a half. Exactly. Uh, it is so wait, the trailer. So she knew this was bad. Yeah, she's seen it. Okay, I was a little worried. I didn't know if like this was like my mom. Yeah. Where like she, this is like her favorite movie. And then we're just going to like rip on it for an hour. <laughs> no. Uh, but then by the time I finished it, I was like, I don't care if this is your favorite movie. I'm going to make her feel horrible for liking this movie. <laughs> it, it's so bad. Uh, so I watched the trailer and the trailer seemed so disjointed. And I was like, man, what is going on? And then I watched That's this how movie. The movie feels. And every scene was so separated from each other. I was shocked. I was like, what on earth is going on? It is this was two different movies that they spliced together into one. Well, I was thinking about it. I think it, that w- is somewhat the case. I think that there was uh, a creative person who wanted to subvert and do a lot of jokes. And then there was someone else who wanted to uh-huh. tell a more streamlined story. And so, and then there was a third person who was really into shark. <laughs> Someone who was just high on mushrooms, who edited we it all. Gotta together. get more sharks because you watch every scene is you could cut out of this movie and it will not affect the next one. Like it, there's not really a strong thread that runs from scene to scene. Like there, no, there's no point to the movie. So there's nothing that's. There, uh, you, I mean, you will definitely, if you cut uh, out chunks, you're definitely going to miss something, but you're not going to make it any less confusing. Like it kind of feels you like. You cut out the whole movie and I wouldn't miss any of it. <laughs> it kind of feels like this was a three hour movie and people just randomly selected chunks to remove. Yeah. <clears throat> but so to start it off, let's go from the beginning to the end. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <coughs> um. Yeah, I I, I I had never heard of this movie. I didn't know anything about it going into it. Um, all I knew that was it had Leaf Schreiber in it. So I thought, okay, maybe there's something there. Yeah. And and uh, what's her name? Tony Collette. Oh jeez, this movie. <laughs> it uh so it opens up with the mom singing. The sound of music. But yeah, so she's singing The Sound of Music. Um, and yes. The hills are alive with the sound of music. And this whole movie is trying yes. to subvert that, right? It's like, trying to it's, be the sound of music. But in opposite. Well, yeah, okay, the lady wants to be the family from The Sound of Music. Yes. But I mean, even the she movie. She wants to be the Von Trapp family. Even the movie is playing on... Like it's like a, it's like a dirty sound of music. Dirty in the sense of like, 
it's like a crazy sound of music. Yeah. Not dirty in the sense of like pornography dirty. That that's how it sounded when I said it. Like in the sense <laughs> like, of uh, it's like, hey, if you like the sound of music, <laughs> you're gonna love the dirty version. <laughs> Mental. Uh, but dirty in the sense of like Roseanne, right? Like you have you had like these like fa- raunchy. Well, not even raunchy, but like you have like these real nice clean sitcoms okay and then you have sorry, Roseanne. trashy trashy yeah trashy is Tra- better that's <clears throat> that's the word and uh, uh so it's like a trashier version of the sound of music i would say if roseanne put on a production of the sound of music you would get this movie yes exactly that's that's yeah i like that if it was australian if she's australian oh yeah oh jeez. <laughs> can you imagine that grinding <laughs> voice of Roseanne but with an Australian accent. <laughs> you know that show's coming back? Yeah. Which that'll be interesting. It's it seems very unnecessary to me. I don't know how you feel about it, but well, I feel every show that's coming back is unnecessary. Yeah, it's like Will and Grace came back. I didn't is yeah. was there anyone who was like oh, clamoring for <laughs> Will and Grace? Yeah, just or not even clamoring but like had thought about Will and Grace and been like, oh, I kind of hope they come back or they do a reunion or like anything. Like, uh, like uh, I was shocked. Just Megan Mullally. Is that what it was? Gotcha. Yeah. Parks and Rec ended her. and she's like, I gotta. She's like, I need something to do. <laughs> that was my impression of her. That's pretty bad. Um, oh gosh. There, there's so many that are, that have come back or that are coming back. And it's, I, I, I start to get this fear. I'm like, they're going to start bringing back shows that I like actually really liked. And it's just going to ruin it. Because, of course, I'm going to have to watch it. But <laughs> It's going to be like Full House, Full House for your it, wife. Oh, jeez. Fuller House. Yeah, exactly. It'll be like that. What, That's awful. What would be the worst show you could imagine coming back? Like, what's a, what's a great show that you would well, hate to so, see come back? That that's funny. So on the way home today, I was talking to Crystal, saying, "If you could have any show that's not on anymore come back and have it be just as good as it was in its prime, what would you pick?" And it's hard because the shows that I really like, they all had their beginning and their ending. I'm like, I don't know if I want them to ever come back. Though the one that I decided on, I would say, is like, "My name is Earl." I don't know if you ever watched that show. Yeah, a little bit. I love that show, and I feel like it ended. It ended before it's before it was truly ready to end. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but what show? So, what show do you think would be the worst to come back? Not which one do you want to come back? Out of shows that I like, yeah. Um, probably Lost. Lost would be a really hard one. To um, to swing back into, like, yeah, could you imagine a lost reboot where a second group crashed onto the island? Yeah, that would be. If if they were ever gonna do it, and if I had to be okay with it, it would have to be like a hundred percent all prequel to Lost, mm. like everything that took place before they got there. Nothing after. Uh, Lost. Lost would be not a good show to come back to. Yeah, I, I can't really think of any good reason for it to come back. I think... I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it how it is. We, my wife and I, we've been watching Friends, because it's, yeah. it's on Netflix now. Yeah. And I think that would be a terrible one to come back to. You think so? I think, yeah. I don't think it would be able to do it, especially after Joey happened. I don't know if you watched Friends oh, or yeah. Joey. But uh, no, I think it would just be really, really bad. Well, yeah, that and that I think that kind of goes along the same thing. It's one of the other shows I was telling her was Seinfeld, right? That's one of my all time favorite shows, one of my favorite comedies. But it, it just wouldn't be funny in this day and age because most I'd say like 90 percent of the problems that these people had would have been solved if everyone had cell phones or like the internet, <laughs> yeah. you know, something like that. It just, I, I mean, I, who knows? Maybe they could find a way to make it funny in this day, but it, it's, 
it, it's fine where it is yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, I wish they would stop bringing things back, but I know, like, <clears throat> it's, it all comes down to what people are willing to watch. And the majority of people are, would prefer to not think about what they're watching. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, it's almost like a white noise machine, you know, just like turn it on and shut their brain off. Yeah. And I, that's why, that's why laugh tracks work. You're like, oh, this is when I laugh. Oh, this is, you know what I mean? Like, it's, right. it's this. And so they would rather not think about what it is. So when they do a Will and Grace reboot or bring it back, it's just like this comforting blanket, you know, like, oh, this is familiar. I like this. Not that it's yeah. good. And also, I haven't watched the new Will and Grace, so I, maybe it's the best thing ever, but I, it just seems so I haven't even watched the old Will and Grace. It was fine. It like, I don't know. It wasn't great. It wasn't groundbreaking, but I don't know. I mean, so I guess it was there... groundbreaking because it was the first gay, first kind of real gay characters in a lead. So I, th- I always thought that was Ellen. Yeah. Uh, wasn't that before Will and Grace? Ellen came out in the middle of her show. Right. I'm trying to remember. I feel like because Will, I feel like Will and Grace was much more about being gay than. Oh no, no, that's for sure. I think that was kind of what, what the it was much more like that's kind of the premise where Ellen was. That was like a just part of her character, which is probably how it should be, where it's like not the focal point, right? right? Like it's not. It's I don't know. I, it's yeah no there's a difference between a show being about a gay character and then a show being about someone who is also gay yeah but mental oh jeez <laughs> <laughs> i thought we were i thought we were done with that <laughs> we're at the the first scene uh she oh yeah we didn't make it out of that <laughs> how does that how does that end She's singing, and then what happens? So she's singing, and everyone is, like, watching. The neighbors are watching. All of her girls are, like, getting embarrassed. And... They run out and stop her, right? Yeah, something like that. I don't remember how it ends. Yeah, I think they go and get the older sister, run out, and stop her because it's embarrassing because they know their dad is going to be upset. Yes. And then... so. Uh, I I don't have anything good to add. (laughs) She, uh, so it continues on that path a little bit. Then she like just has this mental breakdown and decides that her husband had won the lottery because her sister, I think it was her sister wanted to take him shopping. And so when they're shopping, she's like, Oh, my husband won the lottery. I'm going to buy everything. And so then her husband rushes home and sends her off to a mental institution on his way so, home from the mental institu- yeah. institution, he sees a woman standing there, passes her, turns around, passes her again. And when this happened, I thought he was like considering picking her up as a prostitute, the way he was acting yeah, and the way he was talking. I, I could not figure out what exactly was going through his head during this scene. Yeah. Because it looked like she was looking for a ride, right? And no one was stopping. Yeah. So then... Yeah, well, yeah, I thought the same thing. I thought he was just trying to pick someone up. Because he's I like, not, no, not now. I can't do this, da, 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 like that. And then... Because he's also running for office. Well, he's already mayor, so, and he's got a re-election. Well, he's running for re-election, yeah. yeah. And he... So he stops and picks her up, but he picks her up. So there's no... They don't explain this. It goes from him picking her up to her being in the house, taking care of the kids as a nanny. There's no conversation yeah. between her and him. There's no pushback from her. Like it's just like he picks her up, and now everyone is on board with her being the nanny. The, yeah, but it's it's like is that really what he was thinking? Driving by, he's like, "Oh, I should get that lady as a nanny." No, not today. That's, no, I really should swing around and get her as a nanny. <laughs> There's five, at least five scenes that are missing from that. All of that. There has to be. I 
a part of me wonders is like, was he just like looking for a new mom for the kids? He's like, ah, uh, they she could have them. Yeah, kind of. He clearly has wants nothing to do with his kids uh, because he doesn't even really live there anymore. Sit, uh, what's it they call the the disgrace? Yeah, since the disgrace, where the the older daughter tried to commit suicide, commit suicide by jumping off the balcony or the veranda. Yeah, the veranda. She jumped from the second story onto the parking lot but lands onto the car well they, yeah. that's what i was gonna say but lands on the car as the dad was pulling in she right she definitely would not have died if she hit the park i was gonna say lot. she wouldn't have died even if she hit the ground unless you're diving like head first yeah and even that i don't know that's you're just gonna be in a lot of pain. yeah but i feel like because probably it, paralyzed the movie put forward the idea that because the car was there it saved her life and i think the car being there probably hurt her more than it would have if it had, had not been there. Like I feel like she probably would have walked away better off hitting the ground than she would have hitting the car. I don't know. That car kind of like absorbs a lot of that impact though. Yeah. Because it, it I mean it it dents in significantly. Yeah, but there's gonna be spots that don't and then like you got metal and you know plastic or yeah, fiberglass but like instead you're landing on concrete where there's no give. Yeah, I know, but there's gonna be stuff that like cut and scratch when you hit the car. Like I I feel like hitting the, the car is still gonna hurt almost as much as hitting the concrete, but you're gonna have all this extra stuff that's like jabbing at you. You might get cuts and bruises, but I think if you hit the concrete, you're going to have broken bones. All right. We're going to have to test this. You got two twins. Throw one. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'll drop them both from the same spot, one with a car in the way and one without. Yeah. That's the only way to do it. They're basically the same person. Yeah. So they're perfect test subjects. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so. But either way, it doesn't even really get into, does it really get into why she does that? No. Nope. Other than she's weird? They all think they're crazy. All He's got f- they, five daughters, six daughters? Five daughters, right? Yeah. And they all think they're mental is kind of the Based point. on nothing. It, well, okay. She, uh, I, it, it, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I, I couldn't figure out why they would even think that. Or at least, at least most of them. Uh, one of them is weird and sees like aliens. Well, one of them is definitely crazy, according to the movie. the The bigger girl has schizophrenia. Oh, the the young Melissa McCarthy or the young uh, Rebel Wilson. Yeah, she has schizophrenia and hears voices, but she's the only yes. one who is crazy. Yeah, she's the only one mental. Yeah, the rest just like are weird. Say that. Yeah, exactly. And I think um, I feel like the mom is definitely crazy, right? Like Oh no, the mom is for sure. The mom is absolutely for sure. Like they never say I, that she is. I mean, I she assume she goes to the that's, mental institution yeah. and she stays there for a while. I assume that's why they think that they're all crazy cuz their mom they know that their mom is crazy. Yeah, maybe. But it doesn't really get into that. Yeah. So, it's hard to tell where that's coming from. And so um, now you have yeah, the, the dad, uh, this new woman as their nanny who is helping them get over things in one scene. And then the next scene is like berating them and like breaking them down. Like it, it doesn't, it, the only way this movie could work is if that character was the hero the entire time. Even yeah, like they try to like, make you think oh she's not really the hero but she no they they cannot stick with one thread on this they they it's not it's not to confuse you you legitimately don't know what's going on like because it's two different movies yeah her she yeah. she's legitimately insane in one scene and then caring in the next and she's like the the mom that they need and helping them get over their insecurities and to deal with uh, bullies. Uh, but then she's also like threatening them with knives and making them clean. And none of it makes any no. sense. Yeah, it's very in conflict with itself. Uh, and she has a dog that kills for her, <laughs> supposedly. 
Uh, she really, really bothered me in this movie. Yeah. Probably, she's probably the worst character. Of any character ever. Of any character <clears throat> ever. So do any of the the things that she does to help the kids get over things stand out to you? Um, <laughs> I did like when they were in the, the little cafe and those girls that worked there, the, the bully ones were like trying to get the, the, the girls to eat more donuts. Yeah. And she like slams one down on the table and then grabs the other one by her ponytail and then like chokes out the other girl with the ponytail yeah. and then shoves her faces in the donuts and then flips the table over on them. Uh, I did like that. That was funny. Uh, it had, I, it was obviously like if you did that in real life, you would go to prison cause these are like 15 year old kids yeah. and you can't just assault them. <laughs> and well, the police do show up, but the girls just lie. They're like, Oh no, she had blonde hair and she's six two and this and that. And Asian. And Asian. <laughs> except for the French parts. And it's just like, the, that's not how the world works. Like, one, yeah. there's probably a camera. But, but is that is that why the cops showed up? Yeah. Because of that scene? I didn't realize that. I couldn't tell. I thought that she was just, like, already had a warrant out, and they were, like, getting close, so they came across the house. I didn't know it was because of that scene. No, it was because of that because they, they called the police and they had witnesses and ah, stuff. Ah, okay. But, I got you. <clears throat> yeah, it was... Oh, it's so bad. Um, but so the older girl, Coral, right? Coral? Yes. Carl? Coral. Carol? C- Carl. Carl. Uh, Coral! <laughs> she works at a magic aquarium water park it's like a water park shark exhibit yeah and lee schreiber schreiber leave schreiber yeah he is the manager the owner and he's yeah he definitely it starts out where it seems like he is the hero yeah because he kind of protects her from the dude i want to say his name was uh he had a weird name that I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. The guitar player. Yeah. So he, the guitar player and Coral are like hooking up in. So they work together. They're hooking up inside the business. Lee Shriver shows up and tases him and like, hey, this is not how you treat a woman. Basically was the yeah. the message. And I was like, oh, he's, you know, he's going to kind of be. Did you ever see the way, way back? Yes. I ex- yeah, that's kind of what it reminded me of. I expected Lee the Schreiber to be Sam Rockwell. Yeah, character. yeah, like this kind of gruff, like role model who, like, yeah. he's not a good, he's not someone you copy, he, but he's someone who you listen to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, he's got good life lessons for you. Do what I say, not what I do. Type of mentor. And that guy's name was Trout, by the way. Was uh, Lee? Sh- oh, the the, the, gu- the guitar no, player. the guitar player. <laughs> Lee Schreiber's name was <clears throat> Trevor something. Yeah. Or Travis, one of those. I don't remember, but uh, I did. I did like his shark exhibit. Yeah. with the uh, the the mask yeah. inside of it. So they had he caught a great white that ate this guy Harry, um, and it's like this big legend, and he hit him. Did he eat the Pope? Hit or the Prime Minister? Is the Prime Minister? Point. He hit a yeah. mask in there. So if you sh- you can't see it until you shine a light in there. And it scares everyone because there's just a face staring at you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you expect him to kind of be like this uh, reluctant role model, but that's not right. the case at all. It, it, it starts like that. Uh, yeah. And then it just goes a different direction because it's a different movie. <laughs> um. I don't even know. Whoever the director was filmed two movies with the same people. He planned it as like a double feature yeah. and then realized that he only had like an hour footage for each movie and was like, I'm just going to make this one movie. <laughs> I don't even know how to talk about this movie. I don't know how to like, I I don't know. Maybe, maybe let's just stick to characters. That might be, let's, let's stick to each character arc and okay. we'll go from there. So Lee, Lee Schreiber. Starts off, like we were saying, as that reluctant role model, it seems. Then you find out that he is the ex-husband 
of the new nanny. Yes. And they, they have a daughter together, and he has uh, got her locked away somewhere and will not let her see her mother. Yes. Grace. Grace. So that's the story that the nanny tells the other kids. Right. Around the same time that uh, isn't she telling them that they're a part of her army now? Yeah. So she, she's, she starts telling the kids that she collects people to be in her army because she needs them to save her daughter. And the kids get on her side and they start, they become basically the men of mayhem from Fight Club. Yeah, pretty much. I um, this movie, man. This is this isn't the worst I hate us movie, but this is no, the hardest it's to the talk second about. Worst. <laughs> like I I don't know where to I don't know how to to relay the story because it is told I, so poorly that it's it you can't even hold on to it. Like you can't keep it straight in your head. Like what what scene comes next or who what is this character's motivation? And like Yeah, I couldn't tell you the order of this movie. No. Um, I feel like this movie, it, at some parts, it had potential to be okay. Yeah, this movie with this movie could have been good. This movie could have been decent. Um, like I would, I would compare it to a roller coaster, right? Where there's highs and lows, and it's uh, there's some parts that are that are that are good, some parts are not. But then at the very end, uh, it just crashes. Yeah. Well, it's kind of there's like no ending, and it literally goes off the rails, and then everybody dies. You remember the old story of uh, Cyclone, not Cyclone, Colossus, Magic Mountain, Six Flags. Mm. So when no. when they what built it, it was great, I guess, and they had all these bunny hops. That so the the bunny hops are the things that make you feel like you're floating. Yeah, and uh, they went, and it was like supposed to be this great roller coaster, and then a woman got in and couldn't get the lap belt like to click. Oh yeah, and so she's just holding it down so no one notices that it's not latched, and yeah. uh, she hits a bunny hop and flies out and dies. Then they come through and destroy it, or they like have to change everything because someone died on it, and then it became kind of this terrible ride yeah a really toned down ride and this movie is like i don't even know where i'm going with this analogy anymore <laughs> it's like the exactly it's like you're on the bad roller coaster now that gets peed on while you're riding it what <laughs> i don't know i don't i was like now you're riding the bad version but you also still fly out and die. <laughs> yeah, it's it's is really bad. <clears throat> um, it's it's you're right. It's so spliced so strangely that it's hard to talk about it in any kind of order. There's no it's, there's no good continuity because okay. How about how about this? Just why don't you tell me? Is there any scenes that you did like? Well, like I was saying, I I like the idea of Lee Schreiber's character. Leave Schreiber, Schreiber, Schreiber. Well, I don't know why I can't say that. I'm never gonna be able to say it. There's everyone except that now. I'm gonna say Let's it say different. Sabertooth. Yeah, saber tooth. I'm gonna say it different and wrong each and every time it comes leave, up. Leave saber tooth. Leave shaver tooth. I, I can't even say, <laughs> say that. Schreiber tooth. Schreiber tooth. Uh, he. I. I liked his character in the beginning, and then you did call him shaver tooth, correct? <laughs> yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> well, I messed up. <laughs> I couldn't say saber. <laughs> oh no, I know. I wanted, I wanted everyone to make sure that they got yeah. that. Um, I liked his character. Like Karis will in the first scene that he comes in, and then he just it it was so wasted. Like, yeah, he. Oh yeah, he probably was the biggest uh, potential for something good, and then underutilized yeah. or just utilized incorrectly. Yeah, so he um, he saves her from hooking up with that kid and then they hook up later which was was super uncomfortable cuz they go like skinny dipping down a water slide and yeah, you, they just aim it at the guy's butt 
for like way too long while he's sliding down way the water. Way too long. <laughs> It's like, wait, hold on. Who is this movie for? <laughs> and weren't they like supposed to be like fifteen? Yeah, I was gonna say, aren't they like fifteen or sixteen? It was. It was like this is this is uncomfortable. Um, but then, so they get together, and then, so the nanny is now. So it turns out the nanny. It turns out the nanny and. Uh, Sabretooth used to be married, had a daughter, but the daughter got high, went swimming, got eaten by a shark. All while... Is that what happened? Yeah, all while... I had no... The last 20 minutes of this movie were completely off the rails <laughs> for me. I had no idea what was going on. I literally like rewound it multiple times because like, I missed something. I had to have missed something. I didn't. It just made no sense. It didn't make any sense. I... And I, I really could not figure out the whole daughter shark plot and what was going on with that. Yeah, so she got high and got eaten by a shark, I guess. While because the mom wasn't watching. Wasn't right? watching, yeah. But I couldn't understand how old the daughter was. Yeah, I don't know if they ever said. And so her theory is he caught this fish. He caught the shark because it's the one that ate their daughter. But th- th- that's not confirmed. And so she hears her voice with the shark. And so it's like calling out to her. So she wants to release the dead shark from its container into the wild. And that's her mission. She's been chasing her ex-husband around Australia uh, over three or four different places to try to steal yeah. back this shark. So she is recruiting these kids to help her do that. But she's getting influence over them by helping them overcome their problems and like becoming more secure with himself. And then not even like overcoming their problems, more just saying, hey, also everyone else is crazy. So it's not just you guys. Yeah, basically they're like all these people who say they're crazy, they're crazy themselves. Don't worry about it. Yeah, so so you guys are also crazy though. (laughs) And so they all this stuff happens. They end up stealing the shark. So the oh my goodness, this movie. They she gets caught by the police. It, it turned. That's where it really turned into a different movie. Yeah, because there's there's one scene. It w- got real dark. Where the dad comes home. He they they all confront him, and he has this big character moment where he changes. Right, like oh he, yeah, where he's about to attack his daughter. Well, he yeah he she she confronts him, starts yelling at him, and he's like, you know what? If I ever talked to my father that way, he would have beat me to whatever he said, right? He would have beat me up, basically. And he's like, you know, yeah. but I guess he was a bad father, too. And he kind of, like, slumps down. His kids, like, surround him and, like, comfort him. And it's like, oh, he... But he is a really bad father, a <clears throat> bad husband, a bad person. He's a probably a really bad mayor. Well, He's bad everything with no redeeming qualities. <laughs> and so that happens. It seems like... Oh, he, he's he's figured it out. They, you know, they've gotten to him. All the stuff the nanny was doing has now repaired this family, this relationship. That scene ends. The mother comes back home. He starts cheating on his wife again, and yeah, she's the wife shows up at his office and is like, "Hey, you need to leave. We're done. Like, yeah. this marriage is she, over." And, she packs for him. Yeah, and so then it's like, "Oh, okay, maybe this movie is about empowering the mom." to right. you know overcome that relationship like it, if that's the message i it, like okay that makes more sense but why why have this victory for the father right before this happens but whatever yeah why give him any satisfaction and then uh, yeah it, uh, <laughs> and then the well i guess before that happened the nanny gets arrested because they're getting ready to go steal the shark they, she's got all the kids wearing uh, dark makeup and they're like getting ready. But Lee Scheiber catches Coral stealing the keys. And- okay, I want to talk about the lead up to that. Hold on. So the plan was she was going to steal the keys. Mm-hmm. And then those keys were to lead to his other keys, no. which are for for the boat. So what happened was... She was supposed to steal the keys to unlock the wheels to the tank. That was all she was supposed to do. While stealing the keys, she found his boat uh, keys that say grace on them. 
And she's like, okay. oh, well, I can just save because, the daughter. I don't need to. Because yeah. the, nanny, the nanny said, we need to take something that he loves so he will give me my daughter back. And so yes. she's like, well, let's just get the daughter back was basically Coral's idea, I assume. So she takes those keys on and on her own mission goes to the boat and is looking for the daughter. He shows up because this was so stupid. He hears the guitar player playing. Singing a song. Yes. He's playing a song for a bunch of girls and he comes up and attacks him. And I thought, oh, okay. he's he's attacking the guitar player because he knows Coral's in love with him or whatever. Like they, because they hooked up and now the guitar player is playing for all these other girls. I was like, oh, he's he's trying to protect Coral, but it turns out I could not it, figure out what any of that was about. I, he, it turns out because he's using all these uh, mental health words, he's like, my wife is here. Where did you learn those words? Like. She, yeah, he's like, where is she? Yeah, he knew because the words he was putting in the song that his wife, his ex-wife was back in town. And it's so dumb. It's so stupid. Yeah. But so he figures that out, rushes back to his boat, finds Coral. Coral admits to everything. They call the police. The police come, arrest her, put her in a mental institution. <sighs> <laughs> I want to talk about this mental institution for a minute. Mm-hmm. I could not, for the life of me, figure out what the deal was with that other lady who was in the mental institution, and then she wasn't, and then she got married to that teenage girl next door, but then was back in the mental institution with her. I could... So she... Oh, I don't don't know. She was friends with uh, the nanny before I, th- sh- I think it's Shirley right is the nanny yeah Ho- hold on one second yep. hold on I've cut out that 20 minutes that you've been disappeared for but oh yes bad news for everyone listening to the podcast it turns out Joshua is over at your house and this is true I overheard something rather concerning okay he bit me he peed on me and then I had to clean it up because your kids get pain in it I think it's best just to leave it at that. I don't know who the key is, but that you don't need to. I don't want to know. So this movie, mental, everything is culminating. Everything is building towards them stealing this this shark. Shark. Uh, She gets arrested. Goes to the mental institution. The mom leaves the husband, takes the kids to the mental institution. They start singing a song. They start singing a song from The Sound of Music together. Everyone comes out. Then the the woman, the nanny, comes out and. Co- I couldn't figure out what what movie that was a part of because that was definitely that was so weird. Like, not only do they just start randomly singing, well, first of all, what are they even trying to accomplish? Well, they... What, that's going to that's gonna draw her out? Yeah, I guess that was the it, plan. It's not like it's ever shown that she, like, likes music or singing or the sound of music or anything like that. All it, all it is really... Sh- the only... Th- all it's really showing is that the mom wants to be like the Von Trapp family, so here it is. Yeah. But it's to achieve nothing. Yet the whole building like comes to a halt to come hear this group sing, mm-hmm. like it's anything special. <laughs> um, but so they they do that. They start singing. Everyone comes out and listens. The nanny causes a big commotion, and they escape. They, they so so before i hate this stupid movie i hate talking about it uh, before it's, this happens it's really dumb before this happens Lee schreiber shows back up at their house drunk yeah and basically is holding them hostage right like that's very loosely yeah but like he's like overpowering and kind of aggressive and they're like kind of scared he passes out on the couch they tie him up and leave the guitar player to watch him, which... Oh, you mean to serenade to him. To serenade him, which makes no sense at all. Like, it, what is even going on? Like, 
I don't know. This is so dumb, but so he's he makes him listen to him play guitar. But I mean, okay, so it's not like he's bad at guitar or singing, right? Yeah. Where it's like torture. Yeah. He's not. I don't know if that's really him singing. It doesn't sound like it, but it's it's like driving him crazy. Like he's hearing like chalk, you know, or nails on a chalkboard. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't figure out. I was like, dude, like, seriously, you're getting like a private concert here. Just settle down. <laughs> uh, but so because he's there, because so he was leaving, he was moving out of town and he had already packed up the shark. They asked him like, why don't you just give the shark to her? If that's, you know, it, it reminds her of her dead daughter. Like, and he's like, no, I'm, she will never have that shark. It's her fault our daughter's dead. And, like, now you're adding this extra layer of complexity to everyone's relationship and what is true and what's going on. And it's so confusing. You're like, everyone has, like, flipped their their personalities, you know, and it's like, you don't know who is right and who's wrong and who's the hero, who's the villain and all this stuff. So Because there are no heroes. Yeah, and they still, so they tie him up, steal his, his truck with the shark, break the nanny out they go to um release it back into the wild so now remember this is a dead shark you're just gonna go and throw a carcass into the ocean there's no there's no reasoning behind what they're doing other than she thinks that if she releases the shark she'll stop hearing their daughter's voice in her head so she's trying yeah she uh, let, let me also, let me just let me just get this through she <laughs> she's trying to break open the case can't do it he shows up with a gun threatens to shoot her in the head she says you're gonna have to shoot me if you want this to stop he puts the gun down picks the gun back up shoots and breaks the glass she tells him to shoot her to end everything like she just wants to die at that point that's isn't that exactly what i just said well, no, you were saying like, oh, if you want, if you want me to, s- well, okay, yeah, in other words, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fine. And he shoots, breaks the glass, and decides to help her release the shark. And so it's like, oh, okay, he's he's coming back to her side. They're gonna do this together and kind of settle the memory of their dead daughter. He ties everything. He ties everything instantly, up. Instantly, they're it, back in love now. Sort of. I think they're back in con- contempt. What's no not contempt? Oh, because she she says like, oh, I love you so much. Yeah, but so they're they're working all together to get this shark tied up to this like fake pulley system that they got hung up over the bridge. They <laughs> and as they pull the shark up, the rope gets tied around Sabretooth's foot, and he falls in the ocean with the shark. And it's no let's let's talk about how these girls killed him because. They were supposed to wait until he said go, and it's the the classic, oh, are you saying go? And they say no, and they're like, oh, that means go, and then they go too soon, and then trouble ensues. No, I thought it was they go too fast. I think he said go. He, I don't think he was. I don't think he was ready. I think he was ready, but she she gunned it. She took off, and the rope snagged and caught his foot and drag drug him down. Yeah. But so either way, stupid. He falls in the water with the shark and is tied to it. He has a knife on him and is trying to cut these ropes that are clearly made out of steel. Not, but not really. They're twine. Yeah, these are, they're just normal ropes. These are uh, ropes that hold up bridges. (laughs) Yeah, they're cable. Uh, Cable, that's, (laughs) that's the other word for that. Uh, Bridge rope. (laughs) And he can't cut through these ropes with his knife. So he gives up almost instantly. The shark bobs back to the top and he's like, oh, help me, help me. No one is trying to help him before that point. The nanny dives back into the water, swims down, holds his hand. Both of them have knives in their boots. No one is yep, cutting the ropes. Seen it. They hold hands and he dies. The movie just fades to black. They never bring it up again. They never say anything. But the assumption is he dies with the shark in the water. But but he has like the look of like I'm at peace now I can die yeah as he goes down, but also that shark wouldn't sink would it it shouldn't no and if it's gonna it wouldn't float and then sink nope 
uh, there's so many problems with just that scene. But the fact that you're right, he gives up so fast yeah. that it's like he had a death wish. Well, like it's so it's so stupid. It and that it that doesn't seem to affect anyone. All these people work together to conspire to steal this shark that ended up killing a person. Yep. No one pays any consequence for that. No one is like affected emotionally. Everyone moves on with their lives quickly. Quickly. And so it cut it fades to black and then the next scene is the the father is still trying to win re-election and is calling or having his secretary call his wife. Or no no, he's having his daughter talk to his wife and the daughter's like he really wants you to show up and she's like well, I'll do it under one condition. And then it cuts to black, and then he is standing on the stage and starts singing a song. Now, <clears throat> uh. I while I watched this, I did not know this was a song from The Sound of Music. But when they sing it, it's uh, We Love Idol Vice or something like that. In their Australian accent, that I-D-L-E sounds exactly like anal. And he's just singing, <laughs> he's just singing about anal vices. And I was like, what on earth is this song? <laughs> then all the kids show up and they start singing it with him and everyone in the oh, crowd. Yeah. Starts, I was like, what is going on in this movie? And then they come out with the signs that have it spelled out. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm glad that's not how this movie ended is a song about anal vices, whatever that would be. It would have been better had it ended like that. <laughs> but that scene was so stupid. Everything, oh my gosh, everything about this movie is so stupid. But for, there's a couple of things I want to circle back to. I didn't really get a good answer on the crazy lady who married the teenage girl. Why was that allowed? Well, I assume the teenage girl was older than what she, it seemed like she was. I think she was an adult. I, I don't think she was a child. But, like, what is their connection? The but, okay, because she shows up at her house and like starts singing at her, and then the nanny is also just pops in and they start singing, and then they're inside. Uh, I don't, I don't get it. Well, yeah, I mean, you're framing this as a question, but there's no answer. And then I want to circle again to I want to go back to the skinny dipping water slide scene. Yeah, and I want to talk about. <sighs> Now, okay, <laughs> I don't know how they build slides in Australia, uh -huh. but I know that here in America, if I'm going to skinny dip on a water slide, yeah. I'm not going to do it like face down. <laughs> that seems super risky. <laughs> well, uh, uh, that made me so uncomfortable <laughs> the whole time. I <laughs> I really thought something was going to get snagged. <laughs> well, the other thing, you ever go down a water slide and you hit the bottom, the little pool pocket of water at the bottom, and it shoots up your yes. nose? And straight into your eyes, and then you die? Yeah. I, wouldn't exactly. you be afraid of that happening everywhere? Like... That is... <laughs> yeah, you're... you're <laughs> Colon cleanse. <laughs> Basically. It would, oh, man. Uh, yeah, that's that had me super. It was really unsettling the whole time <laughs> he was sliding. I'm like, no, 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 no. <clears throat> oh, man. Um, so that happens. They sing the song. Everyone's happy. And then it cuts back to their sister, the, the wife's sister. Who we haven't talked about, but I oh gosh, yeah, she, there's a lot. She so there's she a lot there. She had all these dolls, and that she considers her kids, yeah, pretty much. And they don't go into it any more than that. And for me, it was kind of a sad thing because there's a lot of people. So this, this is pretty serious. There's a lot of people who have lost kids that will replace them. They'll have like lifelike dolls to replace right. their children. As like a monument to them, kind of thing, or right. like a like a, I don't know. It's like this emotional, like, a, like 
replacement. And I think it's it can be really unhealthy. And uh, people can treat them like they're actual people because they're so heartbroken that you know they miss their kids, obviously, and like all this stuff. And so every time this woman came on, that's all I could think about was like, oh, she's just she's just insane because she she had kids and lost them, and now is using the dolls. Right. But do we know that that's what happened? No. We know that she had kids, right? Because there's mention of it. She says, I, but I have two kids, and the nanny assumes that she's just talking about the dolls, but I don't know if that, right. you know what I mean? Like it, I couldn't tell if she was talking about the dolls either. That was the thing. They, they never made that clear. So she, It didn't sound like it. No. She either actually had two kids and replaced them with dolls, or she thought her two dolls were her kids. In the movie... I think it's just a hobby. The doll thing. Because she... we the Like, one of the first times we see her, we hear her, like, talking on the phone, mm-hmm. saying something, like, about making an Elizabeth doll or something like that. Well, she, and that's why she needs that girl's hair. She said she wants to make Queen Elizabeth redheaded or something like that. And so, right? Like I thought, she made dolls for people. Like that was something that she did. No, she like a she, side job. She took the dolls to a show. It was like the fair or whatever, and she would win prizes for them. Creepy. Um, but so they they like kidnap the dolls at one point and use that to hold the sister hostage. Um, they break all the dolls at another point, but at the end of the movie, the, Oh, I just remembered the final scene, the climax of every, of this giant, everything was leading up to this point. (laughs) It, it cuts to the sister walking into the house, the nanny standing there with her pants down, holding a lighter and farts on the lighter, which makes the whole room <laughs> burst into flames and burn all the dolls down. And the nanny runs out, runs down the street, and is laughing maniacally and kicking over trash cans. Fade to black, credits roll. That's the movie. That's the end. She burned that lady's house down <laughs> with a fart. Yeah. <laughs> this movie is the dumbest movie i've seen in a very very long time now like so it really took a turn like it felt like it had something yeah until until the the third act right where they're gonna steal the shark and it that's when it became a completely different movie that just happened to have the same actors in it oh my gosh it was so horrible yeah it's a giant mess it was really poorly done yeah now, so like we said, this is our sixth hate us movie. I don't think this is the worst one. Or this one, I don't no, dislike this one the least. But I think this is probably the worst made one. Uh, oh no, that's for sure. It is the worst made yeah. one. But I would still say it's better than White Christmas. Yeah, well those are... Those are just painful to watch. This one, while yes, it's painful to watch, scene by scene, is not that bad. Like if you just had to watch the individual scenes, it wouldn't. It's not like grating or like annoying. It's when you put them all together that it's like this giant mess. It's like imagine taking all your favorite food and putting it in a blender, and trying to drink that. Yeah, exactly. Except. It's like not your favorite food. It's like worse qualities Man-ish. of your favorite food. <laughs> it's the off brands. Yeah, it's like the. Well, it, so like if you if your favorite food is say like hamburgers and steak and whatever, right? It's the frozen food versions of that food put in a blender and mixed mm-hmm. up. Yeah, that's pretty much right. Yeah, that's basically it what is, watching this movie is. It's awful. It, it's. I it's something went wrong during this movie behind the scenes that like we just don't know and maybe we'll never know I don't know but something happened and this is the product that we got mm. 
I, I find it hard to believe that this was like his, the the director's like vision for the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, have you seen what this other guy, what this guy's directed? No. He's got, he doesn't have a big list, but he's got like uh, movies that stand out. He's got My Best Friend's Wedding. Oh, really? That's a weird and, one. Uh, it's, yeah, but it's. It's uh it's an A-list movie. Um maybe. You wouldn't say so? I mean it was popular and people like it, but it it's it's really weird. Yeah. Um he's got Peter Pan, he's got Confessions of a Shopaholic, and his most recent movie is Mental from 2012. Hmm. Well, it's definitely seems like it's going down in quality. Oh, he's getting worse. <laughs> Would you recommend this movie? No. Like for not even not even for something not fun even to watch. No, it's well hmm. Yes and no. Uh, uh I'm going to say no. Yeah. No, I don't think it's any good. It it's too it's too boggling. I'm going to I want to introduce a new segment to our show here. Every time we watch a movie I I want you to tell me who you think is like the 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 Academy Award winner of this movie and then like the Razzie winner of this movie. Like who did the best with what they had and who did not. Gotcha. <laughs> That's a very Does that make sense? Well, yeah, now. <laughs> it was a very It took a long way to get to what I'm talking about. Okay, we're looking for you know my f- most valuable <clears throat> player and least valuable player. My favorite part about your segments that you introduce to the podcast is, you, is that I make them up as I go along? That and you forget about them by the next time we do anything. Yeah, this will be the only time. Yeah. So who who did the best in this movie was probably the guitar player. You think so? He, I I think he, he was the, the most consistent, and you know, he didn't have an arc for his story at all. But at least he yeah. didn't he didn't flip from scene to scene. He was very consistently who he was throughout. I thought that the oldest daughter Coral was was not bad. She Yeah, she the problem is she was acting against all these crazy people who were doing crazy things and that didn't make sense and she was not right. responding to that in a way that would make sense. A realistic yeah, way. Yeah, so like I don't know, like if you imagine if someone set themselves on fire right next to a person, you would want that person to react like someone just set themselves on fire, but she would just yeah. be how she was right before that happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I, bl- that is something I blame on the director. Sure. If anything, sure. Or even the, the, the script, you know, this is, I, well, I don't, I don't think these people were bad actors. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, like leave, leave Schreiber. He's a decent actor. Yeah, no, and he he was fine. Well, he wasn't good in this. No, not good. That, well, that's but he I mean. doesn't stand out as bad. Like, okay, I will say that my worst actor goes to Tony Collette, and she's a good actress, but not. This was horrible. Who's Tony Collette? Who is she in this? She she was the nanny. Oh, okay, yeah. No, yeah, she. It was. I really did not like her character. Between her and the sister or the next door neighbor, I, well, they, I, oh, they I just weren't, couldn't figure any of this out. They were bad characters, right? Like the, they were annoying characters. And I think the actresses did a decent job playing that. Like the sister, yeah. the sister and the neighbor, they were intentionally annoying. Like they're supposed to be. So like, I mean, it depends on what your question is. Who was the worst character or who did the worst job with what they had? Because I would say the sister and the neighbor did an exceptional job. That's true. In being annoying. Okay, so who would you say did the actual worst job with what they had? Probably the nanny. Yeah, it was just... Or, you know what? Actually, it it, it might be a, a tie between the nanny and the dad. Well, the dad... If you cut out the scene, I, I, if you cut out the scene where the dad has his redemption with the kids at the dinner table, yeah, then at least he's going in one direction. 
right? Like he, he's consistently a jerk, consistently a jerk, cheats on his wife, doesn't have any redemption until they sing about anal vices at the end. And I, and I get that. I get that he's written to be that guy, but th- there's a difference between being like, like you said, like the neighbor, right? Mm-hmm. Where they're written like this and then they act exactly how it's written. Yeah. And then I feel like his is written to be a like a, an unlikable character, but even the way that he goes about it, like you could just feel when acting is bad, even if it's, even if they're achieving what, I, it's hard to even explain. It's just bad. Yeah. I don't know. I I still give it to the nanny though. She was the worst. Yeah, probably. And probably maybe it's because it's like she's an established actress. Like you should know better. <laughs> you should know better, Taylor. I should. Well, let's stop talking about this movie. I'm please. I, I got no more energy for it. It was bad. Don't watch it. But we will be back uh, soon. <laughs>